This is Kelly Hill, Executive Editor of RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Mike Wilkinson, who is Chief Product and Marketing Officer for InfoVista. How are you? Very good, thanks. How are you? Good, glad to have you here. Um, so we are going to be talking about uh, some of the news that InfoVista is announcing or has been announcing uh, in the last couple of weeks and also uh, in, in lieu of Mobile World Congress, um, the news is still coming. 2020 is still happening. 5G is still happening. Um, mm -hmm. So what are you folks focused on right now and, uh, and through the rest of 2020? Okay, um, yeah, so a big focus for us uh, at Mobile World Congress was the ongoing development of our 5G capability. Um, so, you know, we're one of the leaders in the 5G market. We've probably got um, north of 130 customers today in 49 countries using our 5G technology. And uh, so a couple of the big things for us right now is one, uh, in our planning uh, capability is a partnership with IB Wave. Uh, so IB Wave, uh, one of the big leaders uh, in indoor planning, um, and yeah, we're one of the market leaders in outdoor planning. So uh, we took a look at uh, how we would build a an integrated capability between indoor and outdoor, and uh, we decided that partnering with IB Wave was the best way forward. Um, so we basically got a, a joint sales marketing and development um, plan uh, with uh, with IB Wave. Um, and uh, what we'll be able to do is provide you know, an integrated solution for both um, you know, the outdoor coverage capability, then moving into campus environments, then uh, into in buildings as well. And you know, that's really important uh, in the 5G market because you know, there's been a lot of um, high profile 5G delivery into things like sports stadiums um, so and the campus environments around that. So you know, with the advent of the Olympics, with the advent of the European football championships this year, we see that as you know, some of the key components to be able to build out 5G to where people want to use it. Okay. Um, second thing, um, very much focused around our Thames portfolio. Um, which is best in class for network testing. Uh, we've taken a, a number of the elements within Thames um, to, to build out solutions for auto, automotive manufacturers um, for connected car capability. Um, so we've got a specific piece of functionality called Blixt, which is InfoVista IP. And we've taken that capability and dropped it into uh, car modules, car telecommunication modules, uh, to allow uh, car manufacturers to start to see the network performance as their cars move around. It's kind of super, super high quality data uh, that they get access to. So they can start to see the performance of networks as the cars are moving around a domestic market. Why is that important? Well, you then start to understand how the applications in next generation car systems are going to behave in various areas. So if you're streaming Spotify from your car entertainment system, um, will it continue to work at four o'clock in the afternoon on a major highway? Or will the system need to grab data in front of the, uh, the black spot and basically have the ability to compensate for network brownouts? Um, so we're pretty excited about that. We've been working on it for a little time now. And we're also taking that same functionality and applying it into other verticals. Um, so, you know, 5G is about coverage, but it's also about finding new use cases. So we're working with a number of different verticals right now, two of which um, are in mining um, and also in ports. So in the mining area and both ports, we're looking at sort of telecontrol of vehicles, which is sitting within those environments um, where they may be sitting on a private LTE network. And we're looking at the performance that's sitting uh, within that as well. Um, beyond that, within Thames, we've just announced uh, a new capability for voice quality monitoring called S-Clear. Um, this is a machine learning algorithm uh, which tests voice quality in a similar way to uh, Polka, which is well known within the industry today, well, well adopted. Um, and what S-Clear does is optimize for uh, new voice services of so voice over LTT, LTE and OTT voice. Um, and uh, it will be incorporated within our Thames portfolio as a capability, um, as another solution, if you will, for, for tasting voice quality. Um, beyond that, um, we, uh, we are enhancing some of our service assurance portfolio. Um, so, you know, we've had a long track record as InfoVista in providing service assurance into large IP networks for backhaul. 
Um, and uh, um, we're extending that into the SD-WAN world to provide an overlay underlay solution um, to see what happens when there are a network issue between overlay and underlay. We can identify and correlate between the two. And we're then also announcing a new product called uh, Vista Insight Avatar, which extends that service assurance capability um, into the radio access network and provides unified performance management. So overall, we've been pretty busy um, and, uh, you know, we'll continue to be so going forward. Um, the last baby thing to, to just mention is we've uh, we had one extra product, which uh, we worked with a very large operator um, in uh, in North America. And this is a product which we call Comet. It's actually its code name. We haven't given it its full name yet. And this is providing um, geospatial planning um, at a, a very high performance level. Um, so we've got a number of customers who are very interested in taking this because of the uh, the capabilities it's got in terms of scale and performance relative to the rest of the market. So all in all, pretty busy and um, yeah, hope to now go out and uh, work with a number of customers to get most of these solutions deployed over the next, next year or so. Okay, so I have a question about the, the Blix um, <clears throat> uh, solution. So is that something that, uh, you know, you talked about the automotive use case. Is that mm -hmm. something that um, would be activated in maybe a few sort of uh, canary in the coal mine type of cars where, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be active in every car? Or is that something where, um, you know, every automobile is likely to have an, off an, an active module of that, uh, you know, of that with those capabilities? Um, yeah, so the Blixt algorithm, so it's software first, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and uh, it's, it's meant to run in a very low intrusion method. So it's not grab, so to measure the, the capacity, it's not grabbing all the capacity. So it's very, very low intrusion. And then it, it's, it's, it's basically understanding what the performance is. So it's understanding the throughput, it's understanding the jitter, the delay on the line and so on, which is really important if you're starting to run certain types of applications which are more real time. So say for example, you know, we're on a Zoom bridge at the moment and I'm just on an audio Zoom bridge and I'm running over a 4G connection in a car, making a voice call, um, knowing jitter and delay and so on would be very important in, in that scenario. So. Um, we've taken the algorithm and we've dropped it into a dongle which could connect to the car telecommunications unit or it can sit as in effect a virtual network function that goes into the car TCU on its own. So uh, there's a couple of different options for the, uh, the car manufacturers themselves and you know the pre-production run for an automotive manufacturer would be a few hundred units uh, but then you know, the economics of this uh, are that it can quite easily go into millions of um, so, uh, in about designing the size of the uh, um, the VNF and making sure it fits in the the respective TCU module. Okay, it strikes me that um, for all the uh, information I've heard over the years of you know mobile network operators providing data um, to you know third parties that that could be third party information that might be very, very useful for mobile network operators in terms yeah. of a constant moving uh, view of their network performance. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's the, the interesting part to it. It's a, it's kind of super data network uh, feedback into the mobile operators and, you know, it could create a sort of bimodal model. Um, so you could see, you know, the car manufacturers selling back into the service providers or the service providers in effect, uh, you know, franchising some of their technology into the uh, the automotive manufacturers to get it to provide them a managed service of the uh, of the coverage. Um, you know, the business models are still kind of working their way through at the moment. Um, the other thing I wanted to follow up on is when you mentioned um, some of the service assurance enhancements that you folks have been doing, particularly with an eye to SD WAN. Um, one of the things that I've been hearing, um, particularly as uh, folks are virtualizing their networks, and mm -hmm. you touched on this sort of the issue of correlation and, yeah. and troubleshooting. Can you talk a little bit about how you folks are uh, strategizing in, in helping people approach, um, you know, figuring out where the issues are in their networks? Um, yeah, so the challenge is that uh, if you look at SD-WAN as a technology, 
technology, then it generally tends to sit above an existing fixed infrastructure network. And generally that tends to be ethernet type circuits, maybe with a fiber and MPLS. Um, and that's, that's run on a, a specific service assurance system. So there'll be multiple systems, fault management, performance management, et cetera. Um, the SD, SD-WAN network, um, especially in you know, the, I guess the enterprise sector in particular, is running on a completely autonomous system. Okay, and it's multi-vendor, so it, you know, it can be Velocloud, Cisco, ourselves, Versa, and so on. And the correlation between the two is pretty difficult. And there's not that many systems out there today who can look at it. So, so what you need to then do is say, what the, the likelihood is that you'll see the first issue in the, in the SD-WAN network. So there'll be a performance degradation. And then what you need to understand is who's responsible. Okay, so is it an issue in the SD, SD-WAN network? So a node has a problem, and that could, be a, that could be a hardware node or it could be a virtual node. And then secondly, if that's all running fine, then where's the issue in the physical network that underpins it? Okay, and then having an understanding of where those two pieces are interconnected. Um, and typically then the SD-WAN network will have a, a network of tunnels which will be running over the, the physical infrastructure. So it's then correlating those tunnels to the physical infrastructure as well. So you can then identify the root cause of the problem and then flag that back for, for fixing. Now, in some cases, um, the SD-WAN network could be a different service provider to the underlay network. And in which case you're then into a situation of proving innocence. So one thing's gone down, is it my fault? Yes or no? If it's not my fault, great, I've proved that I'm innocent and then I'm passing it off to somebody else who needs to fix the problem. So, so as you get these more complex value chains appearing, um, having this sort of capability is becoming critical. So we're working with service providers in either where they own the underlay and the overlay, um, or where they have one of the components, uh, but they still need to see into the other one to, to make sure that they know where the issues are. Okay, great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been hearing you're, you're, uh, I've been hearing that visibility uh, as we get further and further into virtualization it is really becoming complex and, and difficult. So mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's interesting to hear uh, how you folks are strategizing around that. Okay. Well, best of luck in 2020. It sounds like it's going to be a busy year and uh, I'll be interested to see how the follow through goes with uh, all of these different uh, product lines that you guys have going. That's great. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.